What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is April 1st of 2021. Well folks, I hope you all are having a fantastic start to the month and in today's video, kicking off the beginning of April, we've got to talk about Ethereum and the surge in altcoin dominance over the last 24 hours, signaling the first key sign here that we are entering into that second wave of the altcoin cycle that we started back in January of 2021. So we're going to be diving into that, talking about some specific plays, making some major announcements for things related to the Dash report. And outside of this, we'll talking about Goldman Sachs and the traditional financial sector caving in to offering cryptocurrency services for its users. Let's just go ahead and dive straight into it, guys, and not waste any more time here. Taking a look over the last 24 hours, we have many cryptocurrencies here in the top 100 in double digit territory to the upside with very few plays here in the red. Many other plays here as well in upper single digit green territory. Old plays like Filecoin, Tron, Qtum Ontology, Thorchain, Neo, a whole range of traditional protocols, even EOS as well. Some major mid caps here in the market when it comes to market capitalization, starting to make a pretty substantial rebound. And this is starting to materialize in market dominance. But overall, all coins, of course, are starting to pick up some steam. But most of the dominance gain comes in from the fact that Ethereum has leapfrogged and canceled out a couple weeks of negative price action, most of the downside in March and also in the later part of February against Bitcoin. We're now back to where we were back in late February for Ethereum against Bitcoin. And this is, again, why I always emphasize to people when you get towards the lower end of these pullbacks, you know, for example, we, I think we have it actually on our, our Binance chart here. We can actually pull it up here so you guys can see those different levels, right? We've had this chart displayed here for a long period of time. And what's showcasing here is that we're still on the broader parabolic trend setting on those higher lows and those higher highs. And when you get down to these periods here where Ethereum you know, loses 30, 40 percent against Bitcoin, that's the time to get optimistic on building positions and accumulating into altcoins. Right. We can see here that Ethereum has broken past the line of resistance here. We sent in yet another higher low along the other three higher lows we had back here since January. And now we look like we're set on a course here to break above those all time highs. So this leads us towards a really important discussion, and that is how do you really prepare for the altcoin cycle coming up here? Well, we've talked about a lot of things here on the channel. First off, this is the time to get excited because we're about to break previous all time highs. And that means we've got more general upside to go. So this isn't a period of time to be worrisome when we're revisiting all-time highs. The momentum's still here. Dominance is gaining. It's got room to grow. So we just have to know about how to actually place ourselves in the proper place. Now, I do want to share with you guys, as it is the start of the month here, that that's going to be the major topic piece that I'm going to be writing about within the Dash report this month. I'm going to be trying to do a full multi-page analysis here, diving into what kind of sectors I'm watching, what key things I'm looking for in the sense of technical patterns, and outside of that as well, focusing in on making sure you don't make the simple mistakes that a lot of people end up making that can cut out major gains in the long run. And outside of this as well, I'm honestly focusing a lot on not only improving the Dash report, which for the last two years, it's been pretty much a sole effort in this case where I've been going through and writing every single month my analysis on crypto markets, talking about some of my top picks, the market insights that I have, and outside of that as well, equities, commodities, as well as Forex markets. So we do like a whole macro suite here, guys, with the Dash report. And at the current rate and stuff, it's at $25 a month on an annual basis. And I basically just go through and cover all these different sectors, showcasing what kind of top plays, commodities, stocks, et cetera, that I'm watching. But there's one big announcement here. Not only have we recently launched a portfolio tool where you guys will be able to view my current portfolio for cryptocurrencies um, in the sense of my allocations in the market on a percentage basis, but we've got another major big piece of news here, and that is taking on wrecked capital to the Ash Report team. So the report that's going to be dropping later on this afternoon is going to be a first of its kind where we're bringing on other content creators that I admire in the crypto space. And Wrecked and I have been not only good friends for a while, but I've been a big follower of his content for the last year or so. I've been following Wrecked as he's really big on focusing on the market psychology, focusing on the broader longer term timeframes, but also provides a lot of interesting insights and a few different ways of viewing the market that I do. And I think that that's going to provide a lot of value. Now, one of the charts that I want to share that some of the free alpha uh, in this case that I know I've talked about before, but also Wrecked really hits home on. And I love this point. And that is what he calls the crypto money flow cycle. And that's something that's really important to talk about here when we're talking about the altcoin space. 
right? Take a look here, right? So we have the start here of entering into fiat currency, right? Starting off with cash uh, into your, uh, your, you know, basically making deposits into exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, Bitstamp, Binance, in order to go out and buy your first crypto. It tends to be Bitcoin, right? And as Bitcoin starts to make returns, you start to do some research and due diligence on large cap cryptocurrencies, some altcoins like Uni or uh, compound, um, you know, it could be even some of the more established ones like Ethereum, um, you know, all these different large cap plays, Litecoin, that really lead the market in a lot of capacity. And then you start to experiment with mid caps and low caps as the greed and excitement come into play into the equation a lot more than they were before, as people continue to try to maximize returns and start having a wider risk profile in order to take excessive rewards, right? So overall, this is what we're going through right now. And if we're taking a look here at this actual crypto money flow cycle, right now, we're starting to exit out of the large cap phase and really focus in on the returns and liquidity circulating into mid caps. Um, now again, we're going to continue to see liquidity flow throughout this time as the market goes up. So this doesn't mean that large caps are going to underperform. It just means that liquidity is circulating towards these lower uh, market capitalization cryptocurrencies. And we can see here, this is a chart that I've had drawn for a while, guys. I drew it back in December just to kind of outline um, a predictable, more than anything, a range of the kind of price action we could expect here for total market cap for crypto. We basically called that total market capitalization is going to go up towards around $8 trillion, surpassing the previous high around $761 billion. So a little over a 10x here in the sense of valuations. And what's interesting is that we have actually shot ahead of that here. Right? So what's likely going to happen here is the cycle is going to probably be shorter or we might have a period of stagnation where the overall market cap doesn't grow that much, but liquidity and valuation circulates from Bitcoin over to altcoins. Either way, both scenarios here provide upside for altcoins here in the interim going into our expected rally into April and May and possibly into early June. And let's just take a look at some of these technical setups here. We got Omise Go, which we talked about the other day. We built a position for the Dash Report around 1100 here. So already a great percentage return here. And now after setting another higher low here is waiting to get above that 1500 sat range. Once we break past there, which again was previous support and is now acting as resistance. If we break above there, really it seems like the sky's the limit, especially with how we've seen it perform in the past. Another layer two solution that we talked about here on the Data Dash channel, right? Take a look at Chainlink, right? Setting in a consistent range of lows or support on top of previous resistance here. Looking like it's ready to start kicking upward, outpacing Bitcoin, and also breaking above this line of resistance, really kicking off for the next cycle for Chainlink. It really hasn't seen any major moves since back here, going back into June into August of 2020. So coming up on a year here in this case, right, over the next few months, where it's gonna be setting up probably for the next cycle here as altcoins pick up confidence going into April and May. So look at Aave, right? Another good just kind of way to analyze the markets here, guys, and what you can gain from looking at the longer term timeframes. I have no doubt, and this is the only way that price is going up and down in this case, there's a ton of people who are trading on the daily candles, the hourly candles, the five, 10 minute, 20 minute, whatever you wanna look at candles, t small timeframes, right? And they're helping to discover all this price and they're trying to trade in and out and make small profits. When in reality, the real alpha here is to sit back in the longer term time frames. Notice that we've had an over 50% drawdown, just like over here, we had a near 80% drawdown. So there's big intervals, 50, 60, 70, 80%, 85%. Those are the kind of things we wanna look for. And we had a clean 60% pullback here, where Aave, one of the large cap DeFi protocols, probably has some room now to start moving up, or at least start setting on those higher lows and higher highs and pick up later in the cycle, All right? So again, this is the kind of stuff you guys wanna be watching for. This is what we wanna see in the market, and I hate to talk about it, because I hate giving it attention, but Tron, right? Fundamentally, don't give a care about Tron. I really could care less, but as a trader, I'm not married to any cryptocurrencies. I look for opportunities to buy and sell at a lower and higher interval. I wanna buy low and sell high. And I gotta say with you guys personally, take a look here at the weekly chart. This is something you would not garner or gain if you looked at the hourly or daily. This is where we had Tron initially list on Binance, right? Major exchange back in 2017. The opening point here, where when we came back up to here, we had a vertical rally. We've made support 
and this previous range, uh, some previous support, which is now acting as resistance, if we pop above this, I can see a lot of momentum coming back to this. I don't like Tron particularly, but this is a sign here, and you can see through the volume here, we're getting some of the biggest bi-weekly, bi um, excuse me, weekly buy side volume uh, that we've seen since all the way back here in 2017. Right? Nothing too substantial yet. If we take a look at the monthly or maybe the, the bi-weekly chart here, you can start to see a little bit more clearly. I've had some major accumulation candles here. It's going to be a matter of seeing that first big breakout candle where billions of Tron are being traded and the price kicks up a little bit more. Right? So these are all just a sign that right now eagerness is coming around for cryptocurrencies. People are getting excited again about what's going on. So. Again, I think the biggest thing here to make sure you do, guys, is that you prepare best for the cycle. And this is always a great place where you guys can get a ton of free information here on the channel. But one way you guys can support me as I try to be as independent as possible, if you guys want to check out the Dash report, there's a link down below in the description. You know, try it out, maybe give it a month. You don't have to send it for the end. You can always just try the month to month one. Give it a shot. It's a couple cups of coffee. And overall, the last thing that I wanted to talk about here in regards to the kind of global macro news, and I got a cool video to showcase with it, is that finally, Goldman Sachs, if you guys remember back about a year ago, I think it's been almost a year by now, Goldman Sachs was uh, putting out some pretty nasty reports on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and, and trying to skew the opinion of how Bitcoin really wasn't a store of value and how cryptocurrencies were purely speculative instruments. Uh, you know, unlike all those other assets that can you know go up or down, or oil, for example, that around that same time went negative. So anyways, Hugh Son here from CNBC is writing an article. Uh, he was also interviewed down here on the Squawk Box that Goldman Sachs is close to offering Bitcoin and other digital assets to its wealth management clients. Well, I have two takeaways here. First off, uh, way to just kind of service uh, your more high net worth clients there, Goldman Sachs. Great move. Really, really about, uh, you know, serving the, the broader uh, the economy or really, I, and then again, I guess Goldman Sachs was never really known for that. You know, they're just constantly known for uh, servicing uh, much more wealthier individuals and making them richer and richer. But I digress. Uh, putting that aside here, right, we also have the reality here that in less than a year's time, Goldman Sachs caved in here and finally started to provide some form of cryptocurrency exposure. And don't think that if they, if they aren't already doing it, that JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all the commercial banks aren't going to do the same soon. They've got it coming in the future here, especially as the banking regulations are starting to become a little bit more clear around custody, uh, around offering these services as the market cap grows bigger and bigger. It's just real unfortunate that they didn't offer it to their clients when it was three to four thousand dollars back in last year, uh, but they're happy to offer it when it's you know over fifty, sixty, you know thousand dollars per coin. Great move, Goldman Sachs. Great move. Well, anyways, guys, putting that aside here, interesting thing to take into account. This is one of the few calls that we made over on the Kryptonites podcast. This is a podcast run by Alex from Swiss Fork, their crypto wallet out there. He's a really nice guy. Um, and he kind of reminded in this case on Twitter that we'd actually talked about predicting in the next three years that this was going to happen. So I thought I would just play it here for you guys real quick, just so you guys could watch what we talked about. When I look at it from that kind of thesis, I look for something that's got that potential to multiply time and time over again. And Bitcoin is the only asset that's probably going to be doing that alongside altcoins and other cryptocurrencies over the next few years. So that's kind of my, my kind of broad thesis and response to them. I think that people are starting to slowly step away uh, from these institutions and it'll get to a point where they have to start offering cryptocurrency services. I made a bet that Goldman Sachs would in the next three years be offering cryptocurrency trading and investment services. So we'll see if, uh, <laughs> let's see. And I, I basically said, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm, I'm long Bitcoin, I'm long crypto oh. and we'll see what happens. Oh man. Yeah, okay, so I mean, overall, like, again, I just thought it'd be fun to play that overall. I mean, I, yeah, I said within a three year time frame, uh, that was a pretty easy bet to place. But look, the point here overall, guys, is that right now we are at really a catalyst moment for Bitcoin. And as I, I talked about a long time ago, um, I actually don't have a Bitcoin chart, so I'm gonna pull one up here real quick, just to, actually, no, we should probably look at the BLX chart here. Okay. You know, what Bitcoin is going through right now is what it goes through every single time it breaks its previous all-time highs. Right? We broke back here, early December 2020, 
above $20,000. Every single time you break past a previous all-time high here on the chart. Got one here, got one here. And we've also got one here. When you break through these previous all-time highs, this is a catalyst moment for Bitcoin or any other market, right? When you start to see that what you thought previously was a bubble, right? Everyone's like, ah, yeah, Bitcoin's a bubble. Bitcoin's a bubble, right? When you break past that, that bubble now becomes a bump in the road. It's a part of the journey for this asset class that's emerging, right? And as I, as I have indicated here on the chart, and we talked about the channel, guys, I really do think that there's a chance we could see some resistance on Bitcoin going into the next couple of weeks or month. Um, but that being realized, it doesn't mean that the cycle's over. This could be a midpoint, just like here in 2019, when we went down from 3,000 to 14,000 and pulled generally back towards around six to seven K, even though we did have the flash sale with the COVID pandemic. But I do think here that we're gonna see a bit of sideways price action and climb up towards that parabolic range of 100, 200 K. I see it coming. I really do, guys. I'm not bearish on the market. And the best thing we can do here is keep that long-term horizon in our minds rather than focusing on quick wins here and there and being fearful every time the market drops. Remember a week ago, uh, the whole market was panicking about Ethereum, the broader cryptocurrency space, and how it's going down. And, ah, you know, it's scary, right? Well, each month here, since all the way back here in October, has been a green month for Bitcoin. I can't tell you guys a market where month by month you're making a 28% return, 42% return, 47% return, 14.4% return, 36% return, 29, almost 30% return. I mean, this is a really giving market, guys. It's a legendary opportunity. One of those few opportunities we're gonna get in our lifetime to participate in a new emerging asset class. And if you're here right now, you're in the right place, guys. Plain and simple. So anyways, in a line here, guys, in regards to the video, that's it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please consider, one of the best things you can do is drop a like, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. I hope you guys enjoy this kind of macro content here. It's how I like to view things long term. It's really just insightful, I think, for most people because it's so easy between other content creators out there, media, news, the charts, it's so easy to get distracted. But if you generally know how to play the market and find that good midpoint between risk and reward, you could really, really mitigate any potential risk and make some great returns along the way. And I'm confident you guys will be able to do that for yourselves. And that's why I'm here. I wanna help you guys make that decision for yourselves. Don't just follow me. Follow your gut, follow your intuition, follow your own due diligence, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.